Hey everybody, this episode does contain some graphic language. I know we have a lot of families, some kids listening to the podcast, so I just want to warn you, this episode does contain some graphic language. The following show is a Pod Avenue production. You are cordially invited to have dinner with the king. Pull up a chair and join WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler and Glenn Moore. Enjoy. Welcome to Dinner with the King. I'm Glenn Moore, joined here by WWE Hall of Famer, a man that doesn't sell for death, Jerry the King Lawler <laughs> on the show. We're sitting here at King Jerry Lawler's Memphis Barbecue Company. Of course, I have my WrestleMania bet, my weight loss bet with the King, so I'm going to chow down here on a salad. King, what do you got over there? Well, I get the big red, the big red splash every time. I got a little bit of everything. It's got the, you know, it's got the pulled pork, the smoked sausage, a couple of ribs. Uh, I, I do, I go all out, and especially when we have a special guest here, okay. because I have him get the same, you know. Well, our guest needs no introduction, but he deserves a proper introduction. But before we get to him really quick, King, uh, a whole slew of topics for the show with our guest. Uh, we, okay. We teased it on last week's show, but for people tuning in or maybe a new listener to Dinner with the King, uh, we're going to be talking about <laughs> the King's encounter with Joey Ryan during WrestleMania weekend. Uh, we all know that our guest is a huge fan of Joey Ryan, just the biggest fan of Joey Ryan. So we're going to have him on. Uh, to talk about that, also King and I, you know, right right now, I feel like I, I feel like a uh, a kid at school that's just about to get sent to the principal's office, or I'm just about to get a tongue lashing from my parents, or something like that. That's how I feel right now. But go ahead. <laughs> and also, you're going to Saudi Arabia this weekend. Ooh. You're going to Saudi Arabia. Yes, for I the am. Greatest Royal Rumble. So, uh, WWE sent you a list of things you cannot do. So we're going to be dissecting this list. And well, now, wait just a minute. Let's, let's don't make it sound like they just sent it just to me. They sent it to everybody that's going. But there are a lot of things that apply certainly just to me on this list. Yeah. So we'll be talking about that. And then whatever the road te- takes us with, uh, with our guest, uh, you, everybody knows him in the professional wrestling world as Jim Cornette, joining us for the second time, two-timer for the podcast. Welcome, Jim. What, what do you mean I'm a two-timer? First of all, I'm not two-timing anybody. I am faithful and true. But besides that, no, look, you've had me sit here through this long, drawn-out no introduction. Kidding. First of all, I mean, I had to shave halfway through <laughs> your introduction. Secondly, I'm, I'm, I'm very upset because I'm, I'm, I just sat down a minute before we went on the air. We didn't even have time to exchange any pleasantries. I sat right down here at the table. I look at the King's Big Red Splash. And it's got the pulled pork and the sausage and all uh, the, the goodness. And I don't care if you're on a diet or trying to win a bet or an insurance scam, whatever you're doing, Glenn Moore. Insurance scam. What? I don't know what you're doing. You're eating like a bird over there. You got three pieces of lettuce and a kernel of corn. I don't know what your problem is. But I'll have you know that I agreed to come down here for this program, and especially because I do want to talk to you, King, about about several things. I know. Uh, um but I, I agreed to come down to this program. The king was kind enough to send the private railroad car up to Louisville because he knows I don't fly. <laughs> and 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 I appreciated that, and it was a nice ride down. It was it was very smooth, except— And there was, the, there was too much rain for the Batmobile. I, I know you wanted to come in the Batmobile, but— Well, yes, but, you know— Convertible, I, you know. Yeah, and I, so I understand, you know, whether you can't control everything right, right. if you do control death. Um, but on the car, on the railroad car, I was expecting a big spread there. I was expecting the something like the big red splash or, or a sampling of. And, you know, Ed King, at your other place down there on Beale Street, you got that great gumbo. The Hall of Fame Randy, bar and grill. Randy Hales hooked me up with a whole big sack of that gumbo. It's like the wine that comes in a box. The gumbo, it's a good gumbo. <laughs> now, wait, did you did you get the gumbo or did you get the uh, crawfish, uh, the corn chowder? I, I got the gumbo. I'm okay. not, yeah, it's I, great too. I'm not a crawfish, you know. I like corn, but the crawfish there, I've seen them. I've I've met a few of them up close. Anyway, <laughs> there was no food on the railroad car. I was expecting. What? This. They said, "No, you'll eat when you get down there. You'll be at the restaurant." Okay, I get here and I've just talked to Cedric the, back in the kitchen. Yeah. And and he tells me that you got the last big red splash. That's why I'm sitting here with with not with nothing in front of me because you. You, Jerry, 
wait a minute. You got this can't fix. be. This can't be. Look, it's only. They're it's, fixing all new stuff. It's going to be. I don't know. It's going to be minutes or even hours before all of them because <laughs> they take such care and such pride in in the way that they prepare this fine food, this culinary delight that you sit down here at at, at Lawler's Barbecue and 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 you you feast on. That now they've said you you got all the good stuff and I'm going to have to wait. So we're going to do the show and then I'm going to eat. But it's how just, about it, some sweet sweet potato waffle fries while you wait? I'll take one. There you go. And you and go. a little of that. Uh, uh, Powdered sugar on it in the water and in the syrup. Yeah, you guys, thing. Are, you guys are killing me talking about all this food, and I'm sitting here with some lettuce and some, some tomato. I'm, I'm, you're killing me, but Jim. So. You know, you know that he's he's put himself. He's I think he's made a bet with himself that if how much you got how much weight you got to lose. Well, get down to two seventy. So that's about 60. yeah. He gets, get, get down, down to two seventy. <laughs> Jesus. And then he gets he's to go to WrestleMania. Well, I'm I'm six I'm six three, so I'm not like five five like. Oh oh, you well know. you're six. Well, that makes all the difference. Well, if, if well, you were seven feet four, you, you wouldn't have to lose any weight. Exactly. Well, come on. Good so, lord. Let's quit talking about food and just. Uh, well, you know the sales here have. Yeah, I thought for you I'd quit eating food. The sales here have gone down dr- dramatically with with me on my diet. Yeah, with him not eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I You're think it'll be it'll be more it'll be less expensive for me to just buy him a ticket to WrestleMania and forget about this diet. He's going to put our restaurant out of business. You'll you'll make it back in in profits on the on the bottom line. But uh, right. it's Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Yeah. First of all, let me say, would you quit scaring us all? Would you just quit scaring us all? I'm I'm happy to see that you're up and about and as usual have not only cheated death but but. <laughs> punched it in the face and, and, and covered it for an extra count. Now, Thomas Marlin was given it the slow count this time. It wasn't even oh. a contest. <laughs> Thomas Marlin, wait, he's already kicked it. He's already kicked out. <laughs> well, he, I'm t- he was I'm t- counting for me from up there already? He was, count- he was counting very, very slow because it wasn't even a contest. You beat death again. Remember, every, every time you'd get a world title match, by the way, in Memphis, Thomas Marlin would be the referee in the suspenders <laughs> and the bow tie, the big show outfit. Right. And when you when you covered the champion for a, he would count so slowly that Uh-oh. you had him down for a five count, right? Before yep. the poor guy could kick out. But anyway, you've got to stop doing this to all of your faithful followers. Well, trust every, me, I'm what not is doing it every it on five purpose. years now you you have a near death experience just to prove that you're not gonna sell it? Well, it looks like that. That's been <laughs> it's been five years it's been over five years since the uh cardiac arrest. And then uh, now the stroke, and so, what what else could I do? I next time should you should you try getting? Well, you've already been run over by a car. You did yeah. that years yeah. ago. <laughs> Survive that. Um, and on live television, I'm I'm maybe it ought to be a contest. Have the have the fans of the show here write in and call in your cards and letters, folks. Postcards are cheaper. <laughs> and figure out well, how does Jerry die next, and 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 how does how do you make your comeback? Uh, what a morbid thing! <laughs> morbid. But what, what, no, because it's 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 fun at this point because you are, you are the only man in the world who can get away with this. And did I hear you described that this latest incident happened after a an intimate <laughs> moment with lovely Lauren? Is that what I? Oh please, that? boy, did I make a mistake telling that? <laughs> that bit of- well, no, because I didn't hear it firsthand. I didn't hear the clip. I'm is this this because this is the story I heard. Yeah. Well, yeah, when when we finally told about it and gave all the, uh, well, not all the intimate details, but we did give a lot of the details of exactly how it came about. Um, it, it was caused by elevated blood pressure, of course. My blood pressure somehow zoomed to 246 over like 140. Oh. And, and it caused a hemorrhage or you know, a bleed on my brain, which the, that kind of blood pressure will sometimes do. Uh, but then, then we finally told what caused my blood pressure to go that high. Not only was, but mainly it was the fact that I hadn't been p- taking my blood pressure medicine for like a month. I was out of the medicine, and thought, ah, uh, you know, it's, you know, uh, do you have any problem with blood pressure? Yeah, I, like I, I actually, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you very much for that vote of confidence. Well, yeah, um, no, I actually have been taking because mine and family history and etc. Yep. Mine was creeping up. It was regularly one forty something over ninety something, hmm. which my doctor said, well, that that shouldn't be that high, and we don't want it to get further. So I got a a, a, a medication for it that also has a little one of those little diuretic things. So you know, yeah. you suddenly realize you have to pee worse 
than you've ever had in your life. Right. Um, but I do. But I that's the one thing I take along with my vitamins faithfully every day, except if I'm going to be on a long car ride. Then I don't want to stop and go to the bathroom every hour. So I may skip. But otherwise, no. And mine's never been anywhere near that high. So you got to, King, you got to take the medicine. You got to take yeah. the medicine. I, I, I realize that now. And especially if, if it's the alternative, take the medicine or not do the other thing. You want to <laughs> She noticed it, right? I heard that. I heard that she. Oh, she listen to you. At, now you just want to get into this. <laughs> I, I heard, she looked at you and said, and said, Jerry, what's the matter with your mouth? And you said, I don't know, but there's nothing the matter with yours. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. You're going to get there's me in so much around. trouble when she hears this. <laughs> no, there's not. There's no. No, they put us over here in the corner because I was going to be here. They knew better yeah, than no that. Kidding. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, please. Yeah, please. Most, mo- no. Now, see, now you're going to describe what kind of sex was going on. No, I, I wasn't going to say a word about it. I was going to I was going to I was going to use the old Bill Clinton uh, excuse <laughs> yeah. and say, really, there was no sex. Sex, because he said that's not sex, right? Yeah, it depends on what the definition of is is, and they're there, right. they're upon. But anyway, yeah, let's so, move on. But <laughs> what, because I, she, I, I, oh, Lauren, I, Lauren has gotten a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, response from people. <laughs> I, I would, I would. Uh, well, she certainly she always gets uh, attention from people. She's a fine and lovely woman. She I certainly she she uses her left and right turn indicator in her car she's a fine person and and speaking of which I, jerry you're you're a fine person and 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 also because of the recent incident where you've been under the weather i i hate to and and, and you're an idol of mine and everybody knows that but uh, i've had to make mention of what you've done here recently what you have and at least you didn't lower yourself to to uh, cater to this half-baked brown and serve roll rolled in pubic hair known as Jimmy Ryan. The, 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 the penis spot fella, you didn't yeah, at let's, least. Let's, get- let's, let's, let's describe this guy a little bit because I had never met him. I had never, I, I had heard a little bit about uh, what he did in his match. And when I did meet him, I, I, I sort of, got the gimmick because he looks like and if you you may remember this guy remember harry reams oh yes oh yes that's who he looks uh, like he Marilyn looks like Chambers harry reams. best, best yeah. co-star yes yeah he was a porn star he's got the porn mustache and all that kind of stuff well he's but, he's, uh, only, he's about six or seven inches shorter than harry reams was and now i'm talking about height here height, now. right of course <laughs> he's a little he's a wee little fellow joey ryan is and as i said he looks like a half-baked brown and serve roll you know covered in pubic hair but he goes around getting attention on the internet, sort of like one of these guys does these stupid stunts on the internet, and their video goes viral. A million and a half people. It's not making him a star. It's making him the subject of ridicule. But he he does these things where he throws people around with his with his penis. I guess what? that's the nicest way you can say it. Uh, yeah, and the during, during the match, he gets an, his opponent to somehow grab hold of his genitalia. And then it's supposedly like super, it's impervious to pain. Uh, and, and it even has powers to where if somebody is actually holding it, it can throw you across the ring or flip you or things like that, right? Is that what yes. he does? Yes, yeah, that's, that's actually what he do. We're not making this stuff up, folks. This is actually what he does. And it's it's sort of like something that would have been done in the old days if if the boys just decided – we don't ever want to have to come back to Osceola, Arkansas again. So we're going to do let's some kill stuff. The town. Let's kill let's the town. Let's kill the town. Yeah, let's let's do some stuff to make sure that nobody will ever want to come to wrestling again. So we won't ever have to come here. This is what this guy makes a career on, and he has talked some mainstream. So let, I don't. I hate to mention anybody's name. Another guy that I've I've been a friend of for ages and ages. He's just too nice. Mick Foley actually yep. was thrown. just came to our club. Just came to our club last week. And- yes. And they inducted in our Memphis Hall of Fame and all that stuff. Because I guess they feel sorry for this clown, and and they and they agree to lower themselves by participating in the thing that he does that makes wrestling look ludicrous. But when I, I saw that Jerry Lawler oh. had been in the same ring with Joey Ryan, I said, "Oh no!" I said, "No, <laughs> no, not the King. No, not the King. The King would not only would the King not do that." 
No, he, well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me stop you, Jimmy, before you really get into the critique of it. That, but let me no, let me no, tell you how that came about, and then pills. you go right back to where you are. I didn't see it yet. I'm just saying this is what I first thought in my mind. No, the king wouldn't do this. He wouldn't stoop this. Le- he wouldn't glorify and 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 lend credibility to this obnoxious little cretin. That's what I first thought. But then I saw it. Go ahead and tell me how it came about. Okay, you know, every year, WrestleMania is the, the big, huge WrestleMania week and all that sort of stuff. And now, along with WrestleMania comes WrestleCon and all of these other uh, side shows where, where, you know, promoters and, and different kind of people take advantage of the fact that WrestleMania draws, you know, tens of thousands of people, hundreds yeah. of thousands of people into whatever city they're at. So, um you know, I was I was involved in a couple of or uh, asked to be involved in a couple of events. I did last year. Uh, Jr. and I signed it at um, at the WrestleCon, and that, that's usually what goes on. But then, uh, you know, you just meet and sit and sign for a while. And I did that on. Well, I guess I did it on Friday and and Saturday. I, I signed, and then of course had the Hall of Fame duties the other night. But then on Thursday, I was asked by somebody. I think I think my guy. Michael Lombardi up in New York is the guy that kind of lined this thing up for me, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, I was asked to do a wrestling show uh, that was, and I don't even know who the promoters were, but it, they, there were several wrestling shows that went on, you know, through through the week down there in New Orleans. Oh, it was and several. I, was, it was about, I think it was about 30. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, I was asked to do this one, and here's what I was told. They said, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a uh, wrestler there, dressed up as Andy Kaufman, and he's gonna go out and he's gonna, you know, be dressed in the, the whole Kaufman uh, uh, routine, and he's gonna he's gonna go out to the uh, ring and he's gonna do the whole whole Kaufman bit. He's gonna do the 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 interview where he says, "Hey, this is soap, and uh, you know you you lather it up and all this stuff, and this is toilet paper, and then he's to he, he, start- he was, he was, he's basically he's cosplaying Andy Kaufman. Cosplaying in, in, in Andy Memphis. Kaufman uh, in Memphis at, at in New Orleans. So then and then he was going to start challenging women, and he was going to challenge you know some women out of the audience to come into the ring and fight him. And then boom, all of a sudden, I wasn't even advertised. Then boom, all of a sudden, they play my music. I come out, I confront this guy, and. Um, and then, you know, I pile drive him or do whatever. We're going to, you know, have have the little Andy reenactment of the Andy Kaufman match. And I said, okay, that's that's cool. You know, that, that won't be bad. Well, when I got there, I, they didn't even tell me who I was. I, I had no idea who I was going to wrestle. When I got there, sold out play. I mean, when I say sold out, I mean, you know, there were like three, three or four thousand people at this event. It was crazy. Um, and Hurricane Helm, Shane Helms was... Uh, like he was one of the agents kind of going, coming around telling everybody who they're wrestling and, and what they're going to do. So, so then just out of the blue, he comes up to me and he says, now do you, have they told you anything about who you're wrestling tonight? And I said, no, I, and I just, they told me it's about doing the Andy Kaufman thing. And so then he starts to tell me, he said, yeah, it's uh, Joey Ryan. Do you know Joey Ryan? And I said, no. And he said, well, he's the guy that does the, uh, <laughs> The super penis gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, w- I wish I could see your face hearing this for the first time. Exactly. And I, w- I, w- I wish I had had somebody filming me hearing it for the first time. But now I had heard about this guy, but I didn't, you know, I'd never met him or didn't know him. And and I said, oh, my gosh, he's the guy that, like, throws people around with his, his penis, right? And he says, yeah. And I said, well, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to be thrown around by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and I said, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I just had a stroke like four days ago, and I just got out of the hospital just two days ago. So uh, you want to give the know. fans a stroke next? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I said, I don't want to have to go back after being thrown around by a penis. And so, uh, so anyway, he said, No, yeah, no. Well, what what, what can you think of anything uh, that we could do? Uh, you know, without you being thrown by a penis. And so uh, that's where we came up with the idea of uh, me hitting him in the... And another thing that had, ha- had happened recently, I guess, and it made the news, I guess the uh, Louisiana Athletic Commission had done something where they banned 
a pile driver and they banned blood in oh, all matches. Right? Yeah, because they they have so much trouble with the the outlaws. They 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 basically banned the pile driver or blood except if you if if it was WWE or or I think Ring of Honor they let get by because they had you know the big building down there or whatever. But it, so basically now they're grading. So you couldn't do a, a pile driver because you were on an outlaw driver, right. show. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Da Vinci's at the flea market. He can't paint this week. <laughs> yeah, but so, but then that worked. Out, then that actually worked better into what I uh, came up with there at the last minute was um, he, and I was surprised. I was amazed at how this indie crowd, you know, these these independent wrestling fans. I mean, they knew Joey Ryan. They loved him. I mean, it was like they loved that gimmick. It was crazy, you know. So when so when I came out unannounced uh, to to face uh, this Joey Ryan, you know the the people the people were so into it. It was unbelievable. And then and Joey Ryan says, "Well, look, Lawler, I know why Andy Kaufman was afraid of you because you pile drive him. You dropped him on his head and tried to break his neck. But you know what? Here in Louisiana, a pile driver is illegal, so you can't give me a pile driver. So I'm not afraid of you at all." So there's what I want you to do right now, Lawler. And just, I mean, you know, he's right on the microphone and he just says, and you may have to bleep this out, but he just says, Lawler, I want you to touch my dick. <laughs> and the place went crazy. I mean, everybody stood up the place. I mean, it went crazy with him, with him saying that, you know, and I'm just standing there, uh, you know, still got my crown in my hand. I'm looking around and, and, um, and he said, that's right. Go ahead, touch it. And and so I walked towards him a little bit. I look around, and instead of touching it, I kicked him in the groin, right? And, and of course, it's the super penis, so he don't he don't sell it. It just you can't hurt the penis, I guess. Yeah. And so I backed up. I looked at him again. People went crazy. He said, "That's right, that's right. Now come on, touch it." And so then I walked up a little bit closer, and I shot a fireball right in his right at his penis <laughs> and it, was, it worked out perfect i mean it was it was better than the one that i hit uh that i hit leatherface with where he caught on fire and stayed on fire for a long time right it, <laughs> it, it hit him it hit him right in the penis right in the penis right in the penis and <laughs> and he took a big bump and the place went crazy that was the first time the penis ever sold uh, for for anybody, he took a big bump, rolled around, and fell out of the ring onto the floor. I like raised my hand. I'm all happy and everything. And then, of course, like in like in Memphis, uh, except for the, the pile driver was illegal in Louisiana, and so was fire. So <laughs> I got I got disqualified, but I was happy, and I left the ring. And then he comes back in, down his knees, and he this you know, and he's he's like fanning his uh, crotch, and then finally he looks in his tights and. And looks up and smiles and says, "My penis is okay. It's okay, you know." And so, and, and so he people, can't he can't even sell fire. Well, I mean, he, he <laughs> sold it long enough for me to be yeah. out of the ring and everything. And the and the, and the cool <laughs> thing was your money, <laughs> right? And the and the cool thing was, um, all the people started chanting, six star match, six star <laughs> match, six star match." And I'm saying, Damn, nobody even took a bump except to when Willie did fall over for the. For the fire but I've, 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 got, I've got to I've got to say this. I was good. I was going to blister you. No pun I know, intended. I know. For, for <laughs> undescending work, to 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 lend credibility credibility to Joey Ryan. But then when I saw the clip, and I realized what had happened, I said, "Okay, leave it to the king. He's figured out the perfect way to work with this guy." <laughs> Because basically, he's and, and you're right. It's over with a lot of those people. And you know what I say for the kind of people who like that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing those kind of people like. But the <laughs> fact he's worked this hard, going from VFW Hall to Rec Center to uh, 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 auto body repair shop, wherever, to to build this following for his powerful penis, and that you were able to go in and be the first one. It's like you the first time Andre did a job. <laughs> the first, the first time they reversed flares, figure four. You, you made Joey Ryan sell his his tiny little penis for the very first time ever, and and leave it to the king to figure out the perfect way to work with with. Uh, he is the he is the idol of the Outlaw Mud Show set. <laughs> well, you know this is this is this is has. Uh, I mean, it made me think. 
this is not wrestling. This is sports entertainment. Yeah, this, that yeah. was you know that was the total. That's the way I was able to yeah, differentiate. I, I would, and think. I take sports out uh, at that. <laughs> this is just entertainment. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that's just ass off. It, but <laughs> but I gotta say, at least at least you weren't the one screaming and holding your your penis. Yeah, at I, the didn't end to, the I didn't have to. I didn't have to sell the powerful penis. Is this the did, most did, you, time did you see the penis? Did you see the footage of it? Yeah, I saw. I oh. saw the clip i saw because yeah. i had to i had to say no i've got to see this for myself no he didn't no he didn't and i popped when you when i wish i wish you'd have, you'd have doubled up on the gimmick though just to see yeah, if a little more a little more fire would have been better it it? A cinder, but it wouldn't take long but um but anyway so i i i know people have been expecting me to 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 to, to get on you but i, I just can't do it because at least you did it right if you get okay. if you're gonna have interaction with the with the fellow Good heavens! And, and and the same weekend in the same building, they had the Invisible Man in the Royal Rumble. I ain't shitting you. Oh no! Are you serious? If I'm lying, I'm flying, and my feet have not left the ground. They had the Invisible Man in the Royal Rumble, so more than one person could work spots with him. God. That's the same. People wonder why I'm retired from from active participation in much of this. I remember the first time I saw anything like this was a few years ago. Uh, I can't, uh, this was another, uh, I think, Michael Lombardi show up in the Northeast, and I had never seen or heard of any goofy stuff like this happening, but they had me and Hacksaw Jim Duggan in a, in a tag team match against each other, and we had two of these local local guys as our, par- as our partners, each one of us, right? And so uh, at some point during the match, these two guys get in there and they're they're going against each other. We do up at this till this point, it's just been like a regular tag match, and then all of a sudden, these two goofballs just like started going in slow motion. <laughs> Have you ever seen that happen? Yeah, yeah, I've seen clips of that. Yes, they do that. Yes. <laughs> well, they started doing yes. that without telling me or Hacksaw that it was going to happen, and I I was like in shock. I looked across the ring at Hacksaw, and he was like in shock, and I didn't I didn't know what to do. I really wanted to go in and just beat the hell out of both of them. But they, they went through this whole long slow motion high spot and I, I got back to the, we got back to the back after the thing. I said, what the hell was that? They said, oh, oh man, that people love that. That's, that's, that's a new thing that's going around. You know, guys, just all of a sudden your match goes into slow motion. I got uh, I got one for you. They 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 have a, a, a bunch of the boys have got together and decided to run their own promotion. So how can this possibly fail? No, right. In, out in California. And so that they can not be told what to do and instead have all the great matches that all these independent, independent outlaw <laughs> fellows uh, love to have without any constraints such as actual logic or booking or we're going to try to draw some money or whatever. Right. And they're in Los Angeles. They're selling out their 400-seat building in a metropolitan area of 15 million. Anyway, I digress. The point is, <laughs> a lot of the I, I actually saw a clip the invisible hand grenade. Oh, God. Oh, the invisible God. hand grenade was in the guy's hand, and this was in a multi-man Zabada. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> and suddenly, and the guy's got it in his hand, and everybody's ducking and dodging, but he puts it down the other guy's tights. Then he, that guy takes a, a, an atomic drop, and when he lands on the knee, the grenade blows up, and all eight guys involved in this thing, including the referee, all take bumps over the top rope. Oh my goodness! And I'm not going to mention any names because, for one thing, I can't remember who all was in it. And, right. and but there, there are at least a couple that are employed by ma- one of the two major promotions today. Really? That were involved in, cause they they somehow think that a because the particular audience they're in front of is liking this stuff because, as we know from certain German videos, you know, there's people that like their testicles nailed to step stools uh, some people <laughs> like anything right but because they're i don't think it, where do you see those kind of videos well, I'll, I'll have to transfer it from vhs king but i'll send you one down at any rate uh, the the point is is that because they are in this bubble of these small shows where only the most fanatical go and they like this because they are uh, appreciative of the performance of pro wrestling instead of the concept of pro wrestling they think that, that that oh we'll just do this and it, it it will never be seen again or it doesn't matter. Some of them say we 
We feel that everyone should have the power to express their art in wrestling however they choose. Mm. Well, I, I, if you were on my card and you had an invisible hand grenade, an invisible man, or a, a, a an invisible fire hose or anything else invisible, you would also get an invisible paycheck. <laughs> uh, but, right. So they do this, and it, but it lives on on video now with the internet forever. And every time somebody sees it, they just go, oh, that hokey wrestling. And that's the impression that's planted in their mind. And then over a period of time, impression, 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 it all becomes something not to take seriously and, and to laugh at. And I don't see why these guys do that, especially since... To really get over now, you have to do more damage to your body than ever before. So at the same time as you're telling people, everything I do is completely hokey and should not be taken seriously, but I'm going to hurt myself to make sure you get the point. <laughs> yep. You're right. It's crazy. Oh, I know. So there you go. Well, King, you were you were doing commentary for a match like that where they had an invisible person back in 2006. Backlash, Backlash 2006, when Mr. McMahon and Shane McMahon defeated HBK and God. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Actually, I didn't sometimes, even watch. sometimes it's like a stroke or a, uh, a, a, heart or a, attack or a, stroke. a heart attack. You try to put those things out of your mind. <laughs> I remember it, and I didn't even watch it, but I remember the 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 buildup leading to it. But I, in that match, though, Glenn, did did God actually work any spots? Did anybody take a backdrop from God, or um, were we just no? It, it's well, they showed uh, yeah. you know they had a spotlight on the on the ramp, and you know it was just the the spotlight you know crawled its way to the ring, and the spotlight signified God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, but see now that's just like, what were we saying then? I do not know. I'll uh, I'll spicy spice some uh, some commentary from the king. <laughs> oh Lord! He is the uh, let's see how he has many names. Let's try. He's the Holy Roller. Oh boy! He's the hipster from heaven. Oh. He's uh, the man upstairs oh. from the kingdom of heaven. Please welcome. God! Someone call 911. Hey, wait, our guy's coming this way. What? Can you feel it? He went right by us. I feel God in my life all the time, but I was afraid to look into the light. Well, the fans are chanting HBK. What will they do if he tags out? They'll chant G-O-D? There's no tag out, King. This is a handicap match. It was right now. I bet Mr. McMahon wishes he had the number to dial a prayer. Come on, they probably hang up on him. Give me a microphone. God. Now he's going to talk you to death. What do you think now? What do you think now, God? Look at him. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it, God? Huh? Come on. Wait a minute. Where the hell are you going? Where the hell are you going? God, come back. Come back here, God. Look what you made in your own image. Look at him. He's a piece of crap. Where are you going, God? God, come back. Ladies and gentlemen, God has left the building. Oh, man. This is uncomfortable. Now, Mr. McMahon beats Shawn Michaels. Well, not just Mr. McMahon. Do you realize what we have here? It's, it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit squad. This just makes me ill. For, for, the, for, the, for the religious folks, God, they, God is everywhere, so therefore in that spotlight could very well have been God. But if, if people started being backdropped and body slammed by God, yeah. I, would have, I would have had a, a possibly a different view of the situation yeah so god did not take any bumps or didn't enter the ring it was basically michael's a two-on-one and then vince grabbed the microphone and informed hbk that god has left the building and then <laughs> and then proceeded to super kick <laughs> john michaels uh. in this match uh this involved the spirit squad and then uh vince pinned Shawn michaels for the win defeating michaels and god if anybody could throw God out of the building, it would be Vince, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and now God's God's pro wrestling record is 0-1, thanks to Vince McMahon. That's a shame. That's just disheartening. You 
You would think they'd give him a couple of wins first just to run his record up. <laughs> just try to get him over on TV a time or two at least. Well, there was a there was a vignette, you know, hyping this matchup, and Shane and Vince were in church, and <laughs> Vince takes the holy water and drinks it and spits it out like Triple Are A. Are you serious? Did this really happen? <laughs> oh, yes. And then Vince goes, you know, if I'm so wrong, I want God to strike me down where I stand. And then Shane, like, scoots over, like, two steps. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, these uh, vignettes were, these promos were, you know. The, you these, know, all right, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, uh, Jimmy. Do you think that stuff was written by your other favorite person, Vince Russo? No, no, he had already gone by then. He just really? said he he had I, he was gone by then, but he had set up a pattern uh, and a bar to 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 stoop to. I just said it was a bar to limbo under that was so low they had to reach even further than that. And and oh. I was gonna say I think that Jerry, a lot of people would go, how in the, the world did this get by anybody? But you don't know what it's like when you're in a meeting where somebody pitches something that Vince likes and runs with, and he runs with it, or when Vince picks pitches something he likes and he runs with it. And it's like a runaway train and you cannot stop it. And sometimes you even get a little Stockholm syndrome where you start. Okay. Well, if we did that, I taught on my show, the highly rated and extremely popular Jim Cornette experience, um, uh, which you can find uh, by going to jimcornette.com and just clicking on the appropriate buttons for podcast, YouTube, etc. I detailed one time here recently how that in the middle of the Flash Funk, poor Too Cold Scorpio, when he was Flash Funk, they had gotten me so far down the rabbit hole with how they were thinking that I said, well, why don't we just get... LaWanda Page and Esther from Sanford and Son to be in Flash Funk's corner. And they called. They called her agent. Really? And she was too old and ill to travel. Or elsewise, that could have very well happened also. And I actually mentioned that. Yeah, I thought you of thought of it. it. <laughs> Simply because of what I was hearing from people that I had formerly thought were sane and rational people. <laughs> So it, it, it can it can get out of hand quickly up there. It really can. It can it can just burst a blaze. Uh, well, you know what? I, I think I think sometimes it's a curse, but I think more so it's a blessing, in that I have a horrible memory, <laughs> and I really I, I really do not remember this stuff unless I mean you know unless it's brought up to me and then all of a sudden I've tried to think back and then but no I I would have never remembered that we had a match with an invisible god. In the in the match. Now, can you guess well, you, where this took place? Uh, where this took place? Uh, no. Either one of you. Um, I, I, it's a place near and dear to your heart, isn't it? <laughs> Lexington, hey, Lexington, Kentucky. Yes, oh, it was. This. It was Rupp Arena, yeah. Rupp Arena in Lexington. I remember it was either it was either here or. I knew it was either here or Nashville, and and so How yes. How on earth do you guys remember that sort of stuff? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, King, I don't know if it's uh, blowing anything to say that we're, we're recording this program on April 24th, but I mentioned to Glenn, well, what a red letter day in Memphis wrestling history. Yeah. And he mentioned it to you and you said, what? Right. <laughs> April 24th, 1977 was the <laughs> 1977 1977 was the first wrestling card that Jerry Jarrett promoted as the promoter after he split off with Nick in the Mid-South Coliseum. It was the match with you and Briscoe where the powder picture was taken. And it was the first time that I ever stepped foot in the Mid-South Coliseum uh, to see wrestling. It was a red letter day all the way around. Famous, famous night. Wow. And that's, the, that's today. That is today as, as we speak here. 40, I don't know when 41 this program years ago aired. today. 41 years. 41 years ago today. And and the only reason it didn't sell out is because Jerry got a little big for his britches and because and, it was Rocky Johnson versus Harley Race for the NWA title and you and Briscoe for the Southern title and Dusty Rhodes was on the card uh, with Ooh. Tommy Gilbert against Phil Hickerson and Dennis Condry and Ron and Robert Fuller were on the card and, and grief. <laughs> Eddie Graham was in the back and, and uh, no, uh, also uh, – Kevin Sullivan and Mike Graham worked, I believe, and and it's a, but anyway, I know I'm doing this off the top of my head, but <laughs> but the front row tickets he did the Golden Circle front row tickets were twenty five dollars, and then uh, they went to, to like ten, eight, and six. So there was still, I believe, eight thousand some people 
but uh, it, it, but that th those were the highest ticket prices in the history of Memphis wrestling. But what yeah, a car! Exactly. What a show! What a what a night! And also, uh, and that's where, that's, that's where the uh, that's where the picture, that famous picture of me throwing the powder. I've had a million people ask me, "Who's the guy you're throwing the powder in the face of?" That was Jack Briscoe. And King, uh, she plugged for you. If you want to buy a T-shirt that has that photo, you can on Jerry Lawler's <laughs> Pro Wrestling Tees uh, store, where you can find ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jerry Lawler. Yeah. So and, so and there. So, Jerry, if your memory was better, then but but maybe you, you ought to hire me. You ought to hire me to come on the, the show every week and give an amazing fact about your life and career that you don't remember. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But I don't you know what I, I do. I, I used to have a guy and and he's still around and I'm going to have to start using. You remember the young guy, Antonio, Bra Antonio, um, uh, is it what? What am I saying now? Well, Antonio Vargas was Huggy Bear. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not the guy. <laughs> this is my guy from Memphis. Uh, Antonio Braxton. Yeah. Well, did I said Braxton, didn't I? I think he started to, but you caught. You yeah. started to. Yeah. All of a sudden that uh, that stroke hit me. Again. <laughs> I was I was I was thinking it was old Roughhouse, the jacket guy from. from no, the no, no, years. no. Antonio is just. We used to have him on the Jerry Lawler show, as the professor, and he really does have still to this day. I mean, uh, I mean, he was there. With oh, Nick that's Oler right. I, I met him. I met him at, down at the Hall of Fame ceremony last year. Last yes, year. I mean, he yeah. really does have like a photographic memory. You could just name. Like it, he would have done just like you said if you just said, "Hey, what happened on uh, you know April twenty fourth, nineteen seventy seven? Oh, well, that was the first show that Jerry Jarrett. I mean, this just comes out of the top of his head. So, uh, well, he uh, ought to but, see a doctor about that. Actually, yeah. <laughs> it really ought, to, <laughs> ought to come out of his mouth. You would think. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> but you know, your your memory needs to be better because I understand. Don't they even now the WWE still sends you like lists of things to remind you about stuff? Make sure I, that's what I've heard. Uh, no, about what? Well, I don't remember if they do. <laughs> they, said, they sent you a list to, to remind. I'm trying to lead you to the next bit. They sent, sent you <laughs> the, the list of stuff <laughs> about uh, Saudi Arabia, the greatest Royal you, Rumble. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah. to remind you to do and not do. See, I was hoping to contribute in some way. To <laughs> no, that was good. That was a good. That was a good softball, but I missed it. <laughs> Um, well, well, you know what? Because I was still wanting to go back to the fact and trying to get into the Saudi Arabia thing. I was wanting to go back to the fact that in 1977, we charged $25 for a ringside ticket to a, a show in Memphis. And now here for the greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia, guess how much those ticket prices are? I do not know. Tell them, Glenn. Well, if you are a – well, there's two different ticket prices since yeah. uh, we're you're in Saudi Arabia, you uh, if you're a single, well, this if you're, this certainly because it's the biggest card of all time. It has to be going for premium prices, right? They've got every superstar in the world, every conceivable top talent oh, yes. that you could possibly think of is on this show, along with the biggest battle royal in the history of of all creation. So it has to be literally something you'd have to mortgage your home for. Well, they're not two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Two dollars. Two U.S. dollars. Well, they live in a paper bag. What? Two dollars. That's, that's for real. If you, yeah, the cheapest is going for about you know two dollars. Uh, the next level up is I think is uh, three to four dollars. Uh, the ringside, which are you, I don't think the general public can buy. Those are for the families of uh, the distinguished uh, families there in, in, in Saudi Arabia and like the Wars Authority. Those are going for sixty the bucks. The potentates, yeah, the, the potentates and the hot and tots. Those are cheap. the sixty dollars oh, yeah. ticket. But you can't. $60. The public cannot buy those. Also, there's some rules for buying tickets. If you are a single man, you must sit in the single man section of the arena, which is the very top of the arena. If what? you wait a minute, what? If you're a what? Now, I thought they were anti women. Were they're putting single men out in the corner too? Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> If you are, you they're know, not anti-women. Come on, they're getting more westernized all the time. Well, that that's that's the that's the uh, that's the uh, uh, story going around is that Saudi Arabia is supposedly anti-women or whatever. I haven't dwelled into this. I'm still trying to fix our domestic issues, so I haven't <laughs> I haven't dwelt a lot on this. But why why would single men be sent out in the in the woods? I well, I don't I I'm not 
privy. All right. Well, uh, thank you for stating that so clearly and concisely, <laughs> Glenn. Go ahead. I'm reading. I'm reading what I'm. Uh, what in front of me. Also, if you not, are a, not very well, but go ahead. If you are a single woman, you cannot go to the show. But if you are a part of a family, you will be given um, the best seats in the house because they want the t- uh, the TV angles to show that uh, women and men are together. You know, and this is the well, great this is a great environment too for people wait, to watch a show. Why do they want to show th- women and men are together? Like it's unusual and only happens in Saudi Arabia that women and men are together. I'm not getting the the way you're explaining this to me. I'm not understanding this. Yeah. And uh, well, I think I think because of what what you said, you Jimmy, you said you know you thought that uh, they were so anti women. There, I, I, and I think that that's. The, a view that most uh, that a lot of people have about the country, and they're trying to change that. You know, so they want when they, whenever <laughs> this is seen on TV, this is they're they're going to try to show families, women, children, and all that together. You know. And the main event will feature Ronda Rousey going. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no ladies wrestling in this event. Well, and and honestly, I've heard that, and, and that's what everybody's making a big deal about. That that somehow now, to be honest. They have think that the WWE has become a standard barrel, a standard barrel, standard bearer <laughs> for social change somehow. Like they're, you know, I, I, to be honest, it, what I would do is since I understand they're paying the WWE millions and millions and millions, just more money than you've ever seen. And charging um, $2 a ticket. <laughs> and charge $2 a ticket. So it is, it's great. The WWE has found an angel that doesn't even need to break even on this deal. Um, just put every woman in the company down for a heck of a payoff on the show and they can stay home. And then they're the, the Saudi Arabians have done something for women. They got them paid for not having to beat themselves up. And I and, think that's and, exactly what's happening. It, well, it did. So, okay. Baby steps. Everybody can't be Sputnik Monroe, you know, <laughs> right. for heaven's sake. Well, I can just say that if I took my telephone to Saudi Arabia, I'd probably be beheaded. If <laughs> Uh, what are they going to look through your phone? I don't know. I have. Are no they, I mean, what what level of invasiveness is is this procedure <laughs> of going over there to the this far off land? I don't know, but I'm not taking my phone, so I'm not taking <laughs> oh, any. Can you imagine no. uh, the headline? Jerry Lawler in prison for <laughs> mobile phone containing or beheaded, uh, beheaded. Yeah, and would you sell that? Um, yeah, I would uh, have to probably have to sell that. <laughs> But no, honestly, back in the 80s, when we, uh, the Midnight Express and I, Bobby and Dennis Condry, were working in world class in Dallas for Fritz. Wait, 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 wait. As I'm reading this, guys, we, we may be making a big mistake right now. I probably can't be doing this. This is the part of the show where we cannot air what was discussed between Jim Cornette, Jerry Lawler, and I. So sit back and listen to this snippet of a classic episode of the Jerry Lawler Show. Hey, right, Marcia, did uh, that answer the question for you? Yes, it does, and, and, and I want to tell you how much this all we enjoy watching the show because this way we can learn things about wrestling we never get a chance to know otherwise. Well, thank you very much, Marcia. We really appreciate you uh, writing in, okay? Okay. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, and we want to tell everybody else out there that the address to send those cards and letters to The Jerry Lawler Show is The Jerry Lawler Show, WMC TV 5, 1960 Union Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, and the zip code is 38104. So we want to thank you for that. And I guess we can't prolong it any longer. We've got to do the bad guy interview. And today we're going to talk to a couple of guys who have been on the show before, Pork Chop Cash and Jimmy Cornette. And fellas, it's good to see you back, especially after seeing your fronts. I expected to hear something witty from you, Lawler, or at least half, halfway so. But before uh-huh. we get started, before we do anything else on the show, I've seen this crummy thing before. I've been on it. I know you have a habit of cutting people off. So I'm going to say this right now. Jimmy Hart, the first family, the Bruise Brothers, and Jimmy Cornette are the greatest things that have ever happened to professional wrestling, bar none. Now that we've got that out of the way, go ahead, whatever you want. Well, I'm not necessarily going to cut you off today. I just thought I'd uh, just go ahead and let you speak your piece. I see Pork Chop Cash there, rightfully so, is one half of the Southern Tag Team Champions. Uh, Why didn't he bring his partner on with him? Rightfully so. I'm glad you said that, by the way. I did catch that. Everybody, he said rightfully so. He is the one half of the Southern Tag Team Champions. The reason why that the other half of the team, the Dream Machine and Jimmy Hart, are not here today. They're out doing some charity work, visiting handicapped children, doing some church work. Wait a minute, work, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Would you re would say that again? Why do I need to repeat myself? No, I just want. I just, or what? Taking too many. I just wanted to. I just wanted the folks to realize there's one way you can tell when Jimmy Cornette is lying. Is if his lips are moving, he's lying. Now go ahead and say that again. I yes. said that Jimmy Hart and the Dream Machine are out doing some charity work, visiting handicapped children, doing church work, but I want to talk about Pork Chop Cash, one half of the Southern Tag Team Champions. You see the belt right here, 22-inch arms, a 29-inch waist, the body that women love and men fear, and he, together with the Dream Machine, are probably the greatest tag team that I've ever seen. Don't you agree? Well, Jeff what I, I agree with one of the things you say. He's got a million-dollar body but a 10-cent brain. If he now listens what, to now people like minute, you and Jimmy Hart, minute, this man, that's what Jimmy minute. and I are here wait for. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, I don't sir. like nobody to talk about me like that. <laughs> I don't like nobody to talk about me like that. You know, I was back there, and I was looking at Monica, and I hear Rod, he had to cry. Yeah, you know what I think? I've been in a tough match. But brother, let me tell you one thing. You ain't never been in a tough match until you get in a match with the bruise, brother. Let me tell you, you in that little cocoa where when we get you in the rain, we gonna slap your face just like that, boy. Okay, you know, Talk one advantage, Pork Chop, one advantage. Tommy Rogers and Coco Ware aren't even used to being a tag team. They aren't even used to winning matches. These men are the champions. These men are gonna take the match. Tell them okay, fellas, you just tell we, we want to thank you very much. And after looking at his body, Jimmy, uh, you shouldn't stand next to him. You look like a good candidate for a body transplant. Hey, we now thank wait you for just being a second. On the show. Now, don't cut me off again. Now, you've done this before. Okay, well, you are cut off. And, uh... What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut away for just a second. We'll be back with more of the Jerry Lawler Show right after these words. Hope you enjoyed that snippet of a classic episode of the Jerry Lawler Show. Now, there is a good portion of the show that we cannot air. It's going right directly into the Dinner with the King audio vault. But with the magic of audio editing, I am able to provide you with some of the hilarity that took place during this portion of the show and i hope you enjoy it but there's about a half an hour more that we cannot air so enjoy this little snippet of what the hilarious conversation that i had uh well between jim Cornette and jerry lawler about the king's future travels to saudi arabia for the greatest royal rumble but no, I'm, I'm just going to say real, real quick, world-class wrestling did the same thing. They got their television show on in the 80s in Israel, and it became the, the hottest television program. And and they were the, welcomed when they went over there. The Von Erich family was by the, the president or the king or whoever's on top over there in Israel these days. Mm -hmm. And they announced that we were going over for a tour. And, and two things happened. Number one, they announced that we were all going to be flown over to Israel – where I had visions, and Bobby and Dennis were pretty much right behind me, uh, since we were the heels anyway, and they loved Von Erich, some terrorist group kidnapping us and throwing us in a closet and us making headlines. And B, we got our Texas Stadium payoffs, and we gave notice and went to Charlotte before they went to Israel. But, but when, when they went and the guys we talked to when they got back, they said, oh, yeah, we had plenty of security. They had an armed militia guard with a machine gun standing outside each one of their hotel room doors which would have just made me feel real safe yeah hmm. um, so i you, you, you have to you have to be careful when you're traveling around the world well well king i mean here's what? a serious question you know we're not i'm not trying to mock whatever but you know you are known jerry the king lawler can you go over there and be jerry the king lawler without anybody kind of throwing a hissy fit about your your title that is a good, very, very good question. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, if I walk out there and pretend to be a king, I mean, is that going to be <laughs> offensive to the royal family? Walking out there with a the crown. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Jerry, I got it. I believe I'm going to be. I'm going to. I'm going to not only be beheaded. I'm going to be dismembered and everything. <laughs> Drawn and quartered. I, yes. I would check into a lot of these loopholes before you take that flight because I ch I checked into more details about going through customs to go to England than you apparently have done your homework on Saudi Arabia. How long are you going to be there, Jerry? Six years or just feel like it? Well, it takes six years to get there. I got to fly a two-hour flight from Memphis to Houston, which is going the wrong way. Uh, Memphis to Houston, two hours, then get on another flight from Houston to Frankfurt, Germany is 10 hours long, and then get on another flight from Frankfurt to Jedi, Saudi Arabia, which is six hours long. So 10, be. 6, 18 hours to get there, and same thing coming back. Ugh. How long was your layover in uh, Germany? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't have that stuff right in front of me. Well, what, Mr. Nosy, what are you, you going to do? Fly over there and meet him for lunch? <laughs> I'm just wondering yeah. if he's going to be... What difference does it make? He's going, he's going all the way around the world. You're worried about how long he's going to be sitting in the airport in Germany. Right. <laughs> and have some sympathy and some compassion for the king. The man has just had a stroke. Now he's got to fly all across the world. Changing changing subjects. King, you're an artist and a comic book fan. I'm getting my own comic book. Have you heard about this? Have you read about this? I did see something on Twitter about that. That looks cool. The, the folks at IDW Publishing <clears throat> and IDW Limited, that they, they did the... A couple of years ago, an Andre the Giant graphic novel, the same writing and artist team, uh, Brandon Easton and Dennis Medry, but they all came to me and said, hey, we love all these old true wrestling stories. The stuff behind the curtain, which is the title of the project, behind the curtain, is more fascinating. The story of Sputnik Monroe of desegregating wrestling in Memphis and, and by proxy sporting events then in the South or the story of Ric Flair's plane crash or uh, whatever the case may be um, major stories and minor stories but uh, uh, the links that guys used to go to to protect the the secrets of the business and the unique shall we say personalities that populated the business back then so it's going to be a whole <laughs> entire graphic novel and we've got a Kickstarter going listen to this now boy howdy we put wait a minute, a Kickstarter. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got to do a Kickstarter to do the well, comic no, books? No, listen, that's what they do these days. They for the these collectors editions. Huh. Um, they they did the Kickstarter, and the perks were uh, things like getting uh, lithographs done by the artist of me and the Midnight Express, or me and the fan, or phone calls from me, updates on the project, uh, oh, being going asked to, uh, going to Saudi asked Arabia. To, <laughs> going to Saudi Arabia and even actually uh, even being drawn in as a character in 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 some of the stories like uh, the the first Kickstarter don donor was the guy that wanted to be the pilot that crashes Flair's plane, and so it, it that's to it basically make the book bigger and better and we funded it in one day twenty three hours as a matter of fact so they put in a stretch goal we add eight pages and they hit that in three days. And then they've done a special treatment to the cover, one of those UV things where the color covers pop and everything. And this is going to be slick paper, like 72 pages so far, I believe. Jeez. Um, and it, it's, it's going to be a cool project. You can go, by the way, because the Kickstarter is still up. We're adding pages. We're adding features. We're doing back of the book stuff. <laughs> uh, you can go to, uh, you know, old wrestling posters and where are they nows and top box office draws and stuff that would be in the back of a comic book. Those features. I'm kind of like the uh, if this was the uh, uh, HBO Tales from the Crypt and I'm the Crypt Keeper and I'm introducing the stories and weaving in and out. Uh, um, but it, they're, they're, we're really looking forward to it. If you want to go to the Kickstarter, it is tinyurl.com slash corny Kickstarter. Behind the curtain with IDW Publishing, and we've got, uh, like I said, over three weeks left, and it's going to be a cool. And then I'm going to have my own. They say graphic novel, but I've always wanted my own comic book. So now I get my own comic book. It just happens to be a 70-plus page, slick paper, heavy print, color graphic novel comic book. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we couldn't get Neil Adams or Kurt Swan on board, but otherwise, we I think uh, you're going to like it. I'm going to make sure you get one, and you won't even have to pay any more than retail for it. That sounds awesome. I want one. <laughs> how, how much would I have to donate to be one of the artists or to get a um, get a drawing of you put into the book? Oh my God! Well, in that if you want to if you want to contribute art to this project, I know a guy. I I think. <laughs> Can be, can be arranged where there would be absolutely no cost to you. I'm, I can speak for that pretty confidently. That sounds good. And just let's, do it. Let's, let's plan on doing something like that, okay? If, if if you want the king, you can you can have the king's page to do whatever the king wants to do, and and uh, and I will sit back. But like we are it. we are, we are also so one of the bridge stories is going to be. The story of the fabulous Fargo's ribbing the hitchhiker by Jackie shooting Don on the side of the road and making the hitchhiker help him dispose of the body. Ooh. That's gonna that's gonna be one of the the, the bridge stories. It's it's yeah, it's, a good one. it's little little. <laughs> there's little ones. There's big ones. There's funny ones. There's poignant ones. There's all kinds of stories. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What, well. what you know what I, I was I was uh, excited to see this year's. Uh, 
the longest ever, I think, the longest ever Hall of Fame induction ceremony. But I was excited to, were, were you not excited to see into the WWE Hall of Fame, the, the legacy part to, to induct uh, Sputnik Monroe and Cora Combs? Yes. Is that not neat? Yes. And actually, my favorite part of the Hall of Fame, usually even last year when I was in it, uh, or involved <laughs> in the show, rather, not in the Hall of Fame itself, but my favorite part's the legacy wing, because those yeah. are the people that, that will never be mentioned by the WWE for the other 364 days of the year. But it, it, <laughs> once again, and, and when you think about it, Cora Combs was probably the most famous female wrestler or biggest attraction in female wrestling ever from, from the state of Kentucky. She Yo, was born in that. Hazard. She was born in Hazard. So right there, but, you know, since I'm the most famous person <laughs> from Kentucky, except probably for Hillbilly Jim and the Black Panther Jim Mitchell and who knows, you know, maybe even a few local guys, uh, it, it's nice to have my female counterpart in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and, and you know, even when I started in, in the – early 70s i i just knew cora as uh, like the she had already moved to nashville then and and you know was living there in nashville i just knew i just knew cora as just being the uh, local uh nashville memphis area lady wrestler i didn't even know that she was a first was she the first woman to wrestle in madison square garden uh not sure about about that, but she yeah, was, I thought that's what they said in the uh, you know in the legacy thing. I was she, like, wow. Well, she was on top and featured in main events for Nick and Roy back in the early fifties when when Mildred Burke would come. That's back when women's wrestling w w was usually positioned. At least Mildred Burke's matches, the World Women's Championship, were positioned as the main events on shows. And Cora was a huge draw for Nick and Roy in the early fifties. And when Mildred Burke would come to town, she would get the shot at the title, and it'd be the main event on the card over the guys. Yep. And and uh, so and boy, Cora was a looker back then too, boy. I'll tell you what. Yep. Uh, she she definitely uh, probably was a step up from from the. Although if you notice when you go back and look, the the women wrestlers in the 30s, 40s, and 50s were much more attractive than the the crew that most of them. And I know probably how poorly <laughs> Lonnie Kai is going to get mad at me. I love Lonnie, but but most of Moolah's girls were not that attractive. You know who I thought always looked hot was Ann Casey. Yes, yes. She, she reminded me of Betty Page. Yeah, she tall was, black hair, put yeah. had the leopard print gimmick going and everything. Yeah. And and uh, old Vivian St. John was quite a looker mm -hmm. and very striking, six feet tall in her day. But most and the of, one that Elvis Presley dated. Oh, uh, well, well, Penny Banner. Yeah, Penny Banner. Um, but she she wasn't really one of Moolah's girl. She was from the earlier generation too, and she would she'd stretch your ass if you if you got out of line. <laughs> I think she might have stretched uh, Elvis a time or two. I'm not well, sure. Well, and maybe down in the jungle room. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're walking in Memphis. Anyway. There we go. <laughs> well, my, this is probably the only podcast you've ever done where Cora Combs' physical attributes, the Saudi Arabian social customs, <laughs> and, and, and Jim Cornette's comic book were discussed, and you said the word penis 747 times. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, I'm really looking, uh, maybe we shouldn't mention the uh, Saudi Arabian custom that we talked about that, because I'm thinking now that I'm looking at this, they may have to go back and do some editing on this, on this uh, version. And I mean that. <laughs> okay, wait, wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, just in case that you didn't hear the scintillating conversation that we actually did record earlier, let me just summarize by saying that the king read a few things that he may not should have read if he's going to be personally in Saudi Arabia in the upcoming weeks and, and uh, for the sake of getting the king back with his head intact. With yeah, because here, here, well, I mean, here, here's, the, here's the last word that I, I I didn't make it all the way down to the end of the uh, email from WWE. And the very last word is this document is for your use only and should not be shared. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, folks, the rest, okay. good portion of the show is going to be there missing. Was some boffo material, ladies and gentlemen, some really boffo material that you're not going to have the chance to have heard heard now at long, this point long yeah. lost tapes of dinner with the king it's gonna go in the vault <laughs> exactly put it, oh boy put it real for the christmas party well, could, when you get back from saudi Arabia. could we release this after you come back king make sure you come back in one piece um let's see 
I think I I, the king is probably going to record something else to be left with his attorney in the, in the, in the event that he doesn't come back okay. <laughs> Man. A well, trip. Well, folks, anyway, yeah, missed a good portion of the show with with that final line. <laughs> that, was, that was a very that was a very small portion of the show. Yeah, I the can I can talk more powerful about penis. Powerful penis was the big portion of the show. I, I can talk more about my comic book. Uh, I know the, that that was a big portion. Uh, horny Kickstarter or go to jimcornet.com, folks, for the uh, the YouTube channel, the podcast. The merchandise. I'm having a ten dollar DVD classic wrestling sale. King. God, Kenny Bowen, oh, really? stop pushing your stuff. Jeez. Oh, heaven's sake! Now, don't for one thing. If I was Kenny, how Bowen, did he mention that name? Own stuff, I'd be having somebody pushing it for me. No kidding. What about poor Kenny? I mean, I just saw some something he puts on there. I guess it's on Facebook. He just asks. He wants people to come over and take out his garbage for him. What's up with that? Well, and I've told him before, if he wants to get rid of that son of his, all he has to do is give him enough money to move away. He doesn't have to have somebody come over and take him out for it. Oh, no, I'm not talking. I'm talking seriously. <laughs> I'm about the real garbage. Yeah, the real garbage. Now, what do they do with that trash down there in Philadelphia? Please Frazier? don't get started on that. We just showed that. We just showed that last week. Uh, on my local Memphis uh, Channel 30 show with Dave Brown sitting there uh, uh, as me as the co-host and we showed that section and I made sure that I talked over the part where Frazier was talking about the, about that little bit. Well, you, you didn't really need to, King, because it, the only reason that in, any of us understood what Frazier said is because we knew what he was trying to say. <laughs> he never actually got it out. I'm surprised that Hillbilly Jim didn't mention didn't mention Plowboy Frazier too in his speech. It was long enough. He should have mentioned everybody that <laughs> ever came in contact with. Yeah. Was was there heat? I wonder of uh, uh, between the know. members of the uh, Hillbilly family. There might have been. I don't know. But I loved Plowboy. You know, man. I mean, he was one of my all time favorites. Oh my God! And and especially when you had to do his promos for him. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about now. <laughs> But I, he he loved to drive. I loved to ride with him. I mean, he was just funny. No, wait. He loved to drive, and you loved to ride. That's yeah, exactly. What, <laughs> that's what right I, I did think that it, it was it was a, a classic stroke of genius when he dropped that loser leave town match, and he came back as the Lone Ranger. Because with that Lone Ranger mask on and that little cowboy hat, there's no way anybody could recognize. You could not Ranger. recognize him. And then many. Then he come back as Kamala. Two or three or something he, like that. He was, he was, he was, and Kamala was upset about that. I think also. <laughs> Plowboy was, was Plowboy Frazier. He was Kamala number two. He was the Lone Ranger. He was Playboy Frazier. Yeah. Uh, when he handed out motel keys, he also he was a Confederate general. The general giant, the giant rebel. <laughs> the giant rebel. Um. He also, oh my God! And and actually, outside of Memphis, hey, remember he worked in Los Angeles as the convict. Convict. Under yeah, that was before he even came to Memphis. Um, and he had uh, a couple of other gnome de plumes also, and then and then Uncle Elmer. So Uncle Elmer. But yeah, he changed his name very often. But the authorities found him every time. So <laughs> he couldn't hide. <laughs> didn't, didn't he get married on TV, on WWE TV? Yes, that was yeah. his. It was a shoot wedding too. Yeah, that was it, a claim to fame. Like main event, yeah. I don't know if the divorce made television. I think it was on radio. <laughs> his his famous son, Chris Frazier, is still still fumbling around down here somewhere. Oh, good lord! The way, oh. <laughs> He used to be the night man at the Days In on Summer, right? Yeah. And the last time I saw him, he was working as a bouncer at the Pony Club or something like that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm he sure. wasn't really, he was not really Plowboy's son. No, he wasn't, but he looked. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't even look. Un, like well, he looked unnaturally like him in a certain way, if it's <laughs> what I'm thinking about, May, mainly because he was an obese young gentleman <laughs> with chubby cheeks and, and, and rosy disposition. Oh, that I think, I think he liked to drive too, and Frazier liked to ride. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Later on in his career. Oh boy. Well, have oh, everybody, Glenn, everybody finished, you, their, everybody finished their food? <laughs> Glenn, what are you going to do to fill in for Saudi Arabia? Is there another country we can malign and potentially get Jerry imprisoned in when he visits? I'll just play a edition of the Jerry Lawler show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure out yeah. something. Uh, something would be spicy, spice in there. 
And, and, and hey, if you are in the Memphis area, by the way, be sure to tune in to Jerry Lawler's Classic Memphis Wrestling on Channel 30, and, and you'll be glad you did. And, Jerry, we'll be carefully monitoring when all the— you gonna, When are you going to come down to be my guest? Um, well, when are you going to ask me? And we're not on the air, so well, we can discuss personal uh, details. <laughs> I'm going to definitely ask you because it, uh, we could, it would be classic shows. And we, what we'll do is we'll do three of them while you're here. Well, there you go. Get, uh, get the, the biggest bang for our buck. Right, exactly. And, and I'll help you monitor those programs from 40 years ago to make sure that, that the things that are best left unsaid shouldn't be said. Right. And now, and you know, we're on every Saturday morning now. We went going to back to the Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, that, that's so perfect. Next wrestling was forever. That is perfect. Now, now all we need to do is, 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 is build to a climactic pay-per-view where... <laughs> It's a, it's a, a, a round robin. You only charge two dollars. <laughs> well, it's 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 a round robin elimination type of thing, and and the winner is the guy who's still left alive at the end of the night because basically we're all so old we'd have some type of stroke or cardiac deal, and and but maybe Dundee Dundee might make oh, it. Oh goodness! Because he has no heart, he can't have a heart attack. <laughs> and, uh, no, I, I love a superstar. I I kid, I, I kid. Know. I don't want him to. Next time I see him, I don't want him to hit me with one of his working punches. <laughs> Ricky Morton said one night, said, Bill, I wish you'd just draw back and haul off and punch me in the face as hard as you can. Bill said, why is that? He said, because your working punches are killing me. <laughs> Were you the one who used to say when Bill took a bump, he would go down in sections? He did. <laughs> on him though you know no, yeah. he took a lot of bumps but he would fall every which way and the foot <laughs> the leg would roll up over the fucking head and yeah, oh, oh. oh did i just say that well i was just thinking that's that's the way bill would describe it well he's editing a lot of stuff out today so he might as well <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go now because uh uh, because Glenn's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, I want to be up for hours editing this, uh, uh, this and, podcast. And by the way, just every time that we said Saudi Arabia in a certain section, just just dub in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll it'll be fine. Nobody yeah. will be offended. All right. This is, a, this is the second or third time I'm going to have to <clears throat> get on to Glenn for this podcast, getting me in big trouble. Well, well, right. well, well, people listening up to this point of the show, will uh, they will not know what took place during that five minutes. <laughs> oh, for, segment. Hey, come on, Glenn, be, be honest. There, there's nobody listening by this point of the show. Exactly. We have run them off now. There's yeah, nobody. Still I left. think they turned in after the uh, comic book drop. The, uh, the plug. I think they tuned out. <laughs> yeah, oh, that was the one. That was the one That's piece. That's the thing of they got him. See, listen to this. <laughs> See you Boy, later. he trying to blame everybody else for his bad hosting there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, come on. All right. Well, guys, Jim, uh, I think your food is coming, Jim. I think they called your food about an hour ago. I think it's going to be. <laughs> the big Red Spice is finally ready. Now I finally get to eat after. The only reason I did this was for the meal, you know. But, no, I, I recommend the food. Come and, and, King, when you need me for Memphis Classic Wrestling, just let me know. I'll, I'll be there. And I'll send you a list of 50 things you're not supposed to do when I get there. I love it. <laughs> That's perfect. All right. Thank you, Thank you very everybody. You're welcome even less. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Jim Cornan, always a blast to have uh, on the podcast, King. Yeah. He's, he is the most, uh, he probably, I think, the most entertaining. Well, Terry Funk's up there with him, too. But uh, as far as just entertaining and, and never at a loss for words and always, uh, I was serious about his memory. It's unbelievable. I mean, this guy can remember so many stories and so many uh, uh, things that happened back in the day that I, I swear it's this, this stuff is just, I don't know why, it slipped my mind. I always look at my, I always thought my mind was like a, like a glass, you know, or a cup or whatever, and it gets full of information. And then as you pour more information into it every day, some of the old stuff just kind of flows over the side and goes out. And it takes a, it takes a little more work for it to, to, uh, to, to, remember it but anyway uh but not for jim Cornette. man he remembers everything and speaking of terry funk he's gonna yeah. be back on the show next week oh my gosh so i'm sure we'll have some choice words for uh you know your stroke and <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, 
Yeah. It would be a great show. But yeah, Jim Cornette, a great interview. Like I said, uh, the second time on the show, you can go back and listen to the previous, the first time Jim was on the show. Uh, and all our iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on all the podcast platforms. King, you have your own T-shirt uh, store at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jerry Lawler. ProWrestlingTees.com. So yep. there's a lot of great designs, six designs uh, for Jerry Lawler T-shirts, including uh, what, ha- what transpired 41 years ago today, King, Jeez. with the powder in Briscoe's face. That, 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 that photo is available for purchase on a T-shirt. Like I said, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jerry Lawler. And uh, King, any final words? We're going to be at the. Well, we all want to. We all know we're going to be at this week at Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I'm in Saudi Arabia. And you're going to be gone. And, and I guess that's you. You watch that. It's on the WWE Network, and it's I think eleven o'clock Central Time or something like that. And you're bringing your. I know Jr. <clears throat> I know Jr. and I are and and uh, Booker T are doing. Uh, uh, there's think these are like hour or two hour long pre show, and then there's a. I don't even know what this is, but we're doing something called a halftime. It's oh, a halftime. So is actually going to be an intermission for the show? I uh, I don't know. It says we're. That's the only. That's the only. Uh, you know, the only instructions I've gotten so far is that we're going to be doing part of the pre-show and the halftime show. Is that when they go and check yourself? <laughs> Please, I don't know. <laughs> oh, but boy. anyway, it it should be fun. It should be exciting. So if you uh, got the WWE Network, and that's one of those deals too. Now I think if you never had the WWE Network, you can go on and and you can sign on and get it for free, and so you watch a show for free, you get a whole month for free. All right, so it's worth. I, I saw a tweet, up. King, that you're taking your tights with you just in case. Yeah, just in case. Who knows, man? Fifty men. That's a lot of a lot of a lot of guys going to be in that greatest Royal Rumble. I'm well, looking forward to seeing Jerry the King Lawler. In the WWE <laughs> ring, know. the greatest Royal Rumble this Friday, uh, starting 11, 11 o'clock Eastern time, the pre-show. It's a one-hour pre-show, so you'll be with your Booker T and JR. Then you'll have the, uh, at noon, a pay-per-view. It's going to be weird as a wrestling fan watching a pay-per-view uh, at noon on a Friday. I know it. So it's going to be uh, interesting. It's going to be fun. I'll be watching, seeing you, King. And, but good luck getting over there. <laughs> Good luck getting back, and uh, hopefully you <laughs> get right. back so we can record next week with uh, with Terry Funk. But uh, King, safe travels, and we'll talk to you next week, man. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see everybody next week. The preceding show is a Pod Avenue production.